My name's Martin Welsh. I'm a full-time painter, and lately I've been doing a series of portraits. And uh, I'm really trying to not just capture a likeness of the person, but I'm trying to get a bit of their essence and a bit of their character and try and put that down on canvas. Today I'm going to be spending some time with uh, Tiki Tane, a one-time member of Salmonella Dub, now uh, a solo performing artist. Uh, we'll get to know something about the man with the, the famous tattoos and the thumping beats. Tiki. Marty, how are you, bro? Good, man. Good, man. Yourself? I'm um, awesome. Good to awesome. see you. Yeah, good, good, good. Come forward, come forward. And we'll have a... The gallery, huh? Yeah. How long do you think it's going to take? Not that I've got to be anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Whakapapa, where were you born and... For sure. Um, I was born December the 17th, 1976. Ooh, you Sagittarius. Sagittarius dragon, same as Bruce Lee. My mum is uh, English-Scottish and my dad is Māori, a tiny bit of Spanish, he reckons he's got a... Oh, yeah? <laughs> I think he just says that to kind of... To break you know, it up? He says that to woo the ladies, Māori, Spanish. Oh, OK. You know. a... Yeah, I was brought up in Christchurch. I've got two older sisters. Yep. Um, and and that, they're involved in your... They're what? involved in my business, yeah, Tiki yeah. Dub Productions. Um, Tiki Dub Productions is this kind of company I've put together to, um, number one, so I can release my music through my own label, have control over it, have control of the output and where, where I can direct my music. Number two, so I can be able to, you know, uh, work with like-minded artists. So my sisters are helping me run that. Were, were you musical at school? At school? Um, well, they, they had a music class, but it, but it kind of sucked, really. Yeah. Um, so I broke away and started my own band. You know, I was 14, 15, and I, I kind of realised that this is what I wanted to do for a living. If I wanted to make a living out of this, I needed to kind of a, um, progress in, um, you know, my skills. So I, st so I started to learn about sound and how to produce sound. And the ups are so, so incredibly up. Um, and, and the, just the, the, the time on the road and the energy that you're putting into it is so intense and it's so um, consuming. You're 20, 21, 22, you're having a time of your life, so you're drinking lots, you know, you're experimenting with heaps of drugs. It gets to your head after a while. I mean, I look back at some of the stuff that I did and some of the photos of me in my early 20s and just go, oh. <laughs> what was happening to me was I was losing um, my focus um, and I was losing my potential. On your album, you've, you've, you've got a, a track called Music Saved Me. I mean, is that in relation to what we've been speaking about? I mean, is that... Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, um, you know, if it wasn't for music, you know, I'd, I'd you know, some of the, the lyrics in a, so a song are like, if it wasn't for music, I'd be in, you know, prison or in a gang or I'd be dead, basically. And those are the three things, places that I'll be, without a doubt. And the thing is, what music gave me, it gave, it gave me uh, a focus, it gave me an, a positive output, and it gave me something to do, you know what I mean? And it gave me something to aspire to. He's got this beautiful brown tone, and it goes right through into his eyes. He has this ochre colour in his eyes. It actually stands out, it's quite prominent in his face. If you really look at him, his eyes are so soft and brown. It's, I don't think you'll appreciate it, but it's almost quite a feminine look. But it's, it's just, yeah, it's a wonderful brown. It's fantastic. So from um, touring overseas, um, Taiwan. I mean, was that a, quite an amazing experience? Oh, it was incredible. Yeah, it was one of those um, opportunities that was like, you know, you have to take. Um, the thing about Taiwan is it's like the indigenous people of Taiwan um, are probably one of the oldest race of people in the world. And, you know, we can, you can trace Māori back through the Cook Islands right up into, you know, Taiwan. And um, so, so we've got a, for me, it was almost like, you know, meeting up with distant cousins. And so the opportunity came about um, to go over there and perform and to do some cultural exchanges with the indigenous people of Taiwan. And um, so me and my sister went over there and um, it was awesome, it was amazing. Being able to meet these people that, you know, they spoke a really interesting dialect and I couldn't understand them and they couldn't understand me, but we connected on a spiritual level that was incredible. And we share similar words as well. You know, we went through 
went through the numbers in Māori, tahi rua, toru, whā, rimo, ono, whitiwaru, iwa, te kau, they, they share similar, similar numbers too, like uh, tahi rua, toru, the, I think their one was like puru or something yeah. again, ono was like kono, and all really similar, you know, and, um, and some of their traditions are similar to us as well. And their tattooing is amazing as well, you know, they've got um, facial, the women have this beautiful facial moko, it's like a moustache, and they also have their hands done, and their tattooing has is, is nearly become extinct. And, um, you know, I, I really connected with these people and I felt there's something that I could probably do here, there's something that I could be able to help. A little calling. Yeah, help start, you know, bring the tattooing back to these people. And um, so I really started thinking about it and I've talked to some friends of mine who practice traditional with the uhi mm -hmm. and talking to them and going, you know, what do you think about we go over there on a bit of an ex expedition and, you know, show these people how to make the tools, the tattoo tools, and show them how to use this and, and try to help encourage that culture to continue. Because it's, um, I think it's really sad that that, that, mm -hmm. that part of their culture has nearly died out. I get a lot of looks from people when I walk down the street, when I catch a plane, da da da. Don't and sit by me, don't sit by me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think um, I've sort of come to the conclusion that it's, that it's knowledge, it's lack of knowledge about tattooing. Some, you know, some people who have never ever met someone who's been tattooed or tattooed heavily like myself, and, and so they don't know quite how to deal with it. And then there's a stigma that goes with it, you know, like tattoo, well, you must be a criminal or a gang member. Or, you know, it's kind of like, it's got this kind of connotation of like a bad lifestyle or something like that. I mean, I think it's one of the most beautiful art forms there is. Yeah, and it's a, it's a huge, huge journey to take that step and mark your skin permanently with, um, you know, for me, it's all about fucker papa, about my family, it's about telling stories, it's about me never forgetting who I am and where I'm from. Tiki. Marty, how's How it going? Good, man. How cool. you been, all right? I'm good. I'm yeah. good. I'm kind of nervous, actually. We're just going to get you to stand over here. Uh huh. I will turn you around. Cool. And when I come back, we'll just turn you around again and we'll get it done. All right, cool. Cool. Sweet. Wait there for me. Just turn around, man. Get over and done with. Whoa. Oh my gosh. First impression. Quick, what's on your mind? Um, it's, it's weird, I'm looking like in a mirror or something. It's cool, bro, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. You've got the tattoos, you've got the eye, you've got the sleepy eye even. <laughs> you've got the scar in the, in the eyebrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, bro, it's beautiful. Yeah, it pops Presence out. Presence of it? Yeah. Pops out, everything sort of goes zoop. Yeah. Awesome. It's awesome. I had fun doing it. I really had fun really? doing it, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I well, I had fun, you know, hanging out and, and being the subject. It was awesome. I felt like, you know, like um, one of those old Goldie paintings yeah. or those Lindau paintings, you know, hey. It was a yeah. Yeah. I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get you in a crushed velvet and a pipe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true, know? man. So. It's beautiful, man. I already had this pretty much in my mind. There's one or two things that I've tweaked. Uh, in my mind, it wasn't as red, but I really... Once I was putting on the reel, I was going, yeah, man, let's just put some more on, just sort of going with yeah. the natural natural feeling and then... Beautiful. Right, yeah. It's beautiful. Mm, I love it. Bro, thank you.